touched his arms and touched uh, his head, I guess you kept the head? Uh, yeah, it was in my room. The okay. closet. The body's a blue heron. What about, you said he took his clothes off of them? They're still there. Oh. Along with his, in the crime scene. Did you crawl them or? There's no, they're there. still there. It's just a pile of his sleeping things. Okay. Boots, his clothes. They're on the back side of the... Uh, there where all the blood is. Hey, Did I'm, you just say on the back side of the clothes? I just want to make sure I have that. It's so the arm and his clothes are near Crosby. Yeah, like this. Okay. Like, here's, here's Crosby uh, Avenue, uh-huh. and here's the bridge. Here's the crime scene. Here's the railroad. The arms are around this area. Okay. Do you think and behind he, the pillar? Do you think he threw them past the railroad? No. Between these two? No, they're between those. Okay. And then you said you took, was it the head in the hands? Uh-huh. Um, and um, when did you put that in? This is Brian Cohey. In February 2021, he murdered a 69-year-old homeless man named Warren Barnes, who was asleep near Crosby Avenue. He decapitated, dismembered, and mutilated Barnes's body. After doing that, he took some of the body parts home. Soon, Cohey's mother discovered Barnes's rotting head and hands in his closet and called the police. He's known to have suffered with mental disorders, as well as having a keen interest in death and mortality. Cohey admitted to killing Barnes with a kitchen knife. Apparently, he'd been plotting murdering someone for six months prior and was looking to kill a homeless person or prostitute under the assumption that no one would miss them. This is his confession at the police station. Beware, this is a very disturbing confession, and viewer discretion is advised. And how did you get here? I murdered someone. To do my job, since you can't have a face card, we'll just go to the right. Okay. Yeah. You want to look at a form with me? I know the basics. All right, right. Yeah, that's what it is, but I'm going to go over a form with you just to make sure we both understand, okay? Yeah. So, can we go back over? I didn't quite understand the dates or what ended up to the body. You said you tried, but it didn't work out. Let uh, me just go back to what you want to know. You start back at the beginning and go slow and tell me as many details as you can remember. So, because I mean, I'm already going to jail for the 15 years probably. I have no idea. Because we're at the beginning. It's, <laughs> it's murder. I mean, I'm going to jail for okay. 20 probably. But, um, so I figure, why well, fight it? Okay. Um, so, what's important to me is to learn as much about you and what you did and as I can. Well, as many details as you can give me, the better. I drive a 2007 Ford 500. Okay. And I keep a small 18-inch bat in there for self-defense. Okay. And a large kitchen knife in the glove box, both for self-defense, because uh, I don't really trust anyone or really any part of this town. So that's why I have both. And. Um, yeah, it was the night of February 27th. It was a full moon. And I figured, I can see so well, why not try it out? And uh, I am in a bad state of mind at that time. I am, I have major depressive disorder, so I am not thinking, shall I say, positively. Okay. And I am cruising around for an hour hour and a half. Um, so I fill up on gas halfway through. And I'm eventually driving underneath the bridge near the sheriff's office. You know, like how... Can I? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. And Brian, before you start, you say you have a major depressive disorder. I'm just curious what those are. Well, actually, I have several. I have high-functioning Asperger's. Okay. I have ADHD uh-huh. and major depressive disorder. Okay. Major depressive, so you were wondering what that last one is? Yeah, I know what they are. I was curious, yeah, if you, what the exact diagnosis was and, and who diagnosed them? Uh, it was Bradley Phillips from Lotus Counseling. He, um, was Brett Phillips from which counseling? Lotus Counseling. It was, I want to say, years ago. Okay. 
he said, it looks like you have major depressive disorder. I could be wrong. He could have not formally diagnosed me, but that's what he told me I have. Mm -hmm. so, it's okay. Okay. so let's just say this is the office, right? And this is the parking lot. Take a turn, and here is the bridge. That one. And it was right here. Okay. So the bridge right here on ground? Yeah. The one. I'm bad with I'm bad with words. I'm just. Yeah. By the way, Emma had been too late to take her. Me too. <laughs> Can I get the password for your phone? They just want it. It's, it's a, it is a drawing code, can I? Yeah. Draw it on there and I'll send them a picture. Or just put a big one down there and I'll uh, send them a picture to be able to see it. Or you can do it on the wall if you want.
No, actually, after I killed him, I just couldn't stop saying stinky, dirty, dirty, stinky, stinky. It wasn't. I wasn't selling anything, but... Then why were you saying that? I don't know. Okay. And, um... But you remember doing it, so... Yeah. I suppose it was just me speaking out my mind at that moment. It was a pouring out of the mind. What were you worried about? I mean, this looks like it's pretty close to the road and stuff. Somebody seen you well, or catching you? Well, it was 11 p.m., okay. so not many were driving by. A few, well, it was behind the pillar. So, like, here's the road. Uh -huh. It was here. So people would only see a brief thing here and here. So were you worried about them seeing you? I was worried about one of them stopping. But what did you think would happen if somebody well, well, if they looked, well, it was quite dark under there, so they wouldn't have seen the guy if okay. they looked. Um, they would have seen me holding a bloody 12-inch knife, okay. wearing gloves, and wearing a mask to conceal my identity, a face mask. Okay. So you weren't doing it for COVID, you were doing it to hide your face? Um, partially. So, so this is me. <laughs> <Hi>. um, <laughs> And, uh, uh, yeah, but no one stopped, and I'm just like, huh, proves the bystander effect. I noticed you got a cut on your hand, is that from... Oh, that was when I was doing gas, when I filled up. I mentioned that I filled up gas when I was driving around. Okay. I was driving around, I was on a quarter of a tank, so I filled up on gas. What happened was, because I don't want to be seen in a gas station with a knife poking out of my pocket, I put it in the car, the back seat floor. When I'm done with it, I try and grab it, but my hand slips and grabs the blade, and as I pick it up, it slices these two fingers. Okay. Like, a lot of times if you're stepping like this, it'll slide. No, out. no, I had, had, had a guard. I mean, okay. had a, it was one of those knives that was Where like... Where is it? What? The Where knife? is it? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I have it. Okay. You found it in my car. Um, and then, let's see. Yeah. And then, after that, I stripped his clothes, I cut open his belly to see his guts. They're really pink. <laughs> Sorry, that was morbid. Um, and uh, then I cut off his head. I gave him a Glasgow smile. What's that? A Joker smile. I, I destroyed his eyes by stabbing them in. Okay. And then I cut off his hands. I put those in plastic Ziploc bags. And then I cut off his right arm at this joint okay. and at this joint. And then at this arm, I tried cutting it here, and then I tried cutting it here. But what happened was uh, I accidentally broke his bone. This one, it was poking out. Okay. And so I left that one here, partially cut, dismembered here, bone sticking out. And then I left his body there. And then I took the head, put it in a leftover pizza box from the dinner a few nights ago. And then I took the hands, put them in the back, drove home, hid the hands and head in my room, cleaned the knife, threw away the garbage with, with the blood on it, and then put the blood stained, wasn't stained, it had splatters on it. I put it in the dish, in the, um, the washing machine. What, what did you put in there? I put the outfit I murdered him in. in so you were wearing it? Yeah, I, I was wearing okay. it. In, a, in the washing machine, but on high speed, so it would effectively remove the blood. I washed it twice. And then I tried going to sleep, but I was worried that because there was a hole in my gloves right here, I was worried that they would be able to obtain a partial print. Mm -hmm. So I figured, why not go all the way? I drove back in a different outfit, picked up his body, surprisingly heavy, um, put it in my trunk, and drove to the Blue Heron drop-off station. Okay. I parked, so it's like this, right? So let's say this is the ground. The ramp is quite steep. And you need to have four-wheel drive to uh, pull out of it. Okay. And uh, my car didn't. <laughs> I thought 
<laughs> so I pull in. I thought that I could um, drive out. So because uh, I put I put in reverse A so that it's easier to pull the body out. And B because the back tires would provide propulsion to push up. Right. And I open the trunk, I take his body out, I put it in the water, and because I don't want fingerprints on a body, so I just try moving it with my shoes. Um, that works successfully. He goes out some part in the river and floats off. Okay. God knows where he is now. Would it be a he? He's dead. Still a he. Okay, yeah. God knows where he is now. I think my guess was that it would be discovered this morning or next morning, so I would keep an eye out for any river related activity. Okay. Did you, so, I can back up just so I don't lose track of where my mind is. So you cut him open, did you cut his arms off, his hands off, all that, before you went home? Yeah, before I went home, I tossed the arm bits around. Like, I took the right arm bit, threw it out, okay. took the left arm bit, threw it out. Oh, it's somewhere around that bridge? Yeah, but look in a... Because I know crime scenes can be a very wide area. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to look in a five, in a ten foot area. So like this is a zoom in. So here's the road. And here's where my car was parked. You're going his corpse is here. You're going to want a crime scene that's roughly to the railroad tracks, because they're right here, okay. underneath the bridge, to the railroad tracks, here, just to help your search. And this is the road? This is right here. This is that road. Is that? Huh? What's the name of that road? It goes to, like, underneath the bridge. Yes, yeah, the road that comes on the back of the, are you talking about the road that goes back behind the jail? Um, I'm not quite sure. Or the one that goes across the river and to your house, to your mom's house. Do you mind? Sometime, if I could show you that road, I'm really bad with streets. Well, we could get you a map. Maybe I'm not sure. sure. Uh, map would work. Okay. And, uh, I've got a few clarifying questions anyway. Go ahead. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Then when I try to inevitably try it out, yeah. my car didn't go out. From Blue Heron. Yeah, from Blue Heron. Yeah. My car was stuck. I tried putting it full throttle. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> My car didn't have four-wheel drive. Stupid <laughs> okay. me. Okay. And so then I tried putting it in low gear. I'm trying everything at this point. Right, right. And it still doesn't come out. And then okay. it slides into the river. Oh! My car slides into the river, me inside. Oh. And so I'm there in a car quickly being flooded with water. Okay. It is the middle of February. It's cold. At night. Yeah. In the river that's almost freezing. Yes. I'm drenched. Ooh. <laughs> I almost died. So I'm able to climb out. Um, I don't see the body, so I'm, I assume there's a travel with it. Okay. And I come up, and I'm sitting there. I need to act fast or else I'll die of hypothermia. I'm, a, yeah. I'm panicking a bit at this point. I'm going to be like, oh, this is what I'm going to be remembered for, dying of hypothermia and a botched attempt at hiding a body. And I'm just like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Right, so I'm running. So I go up to the road, and I'm trying to find out a car. One doesn't come by for five minutes. Eventually it does. And it was an old high school friend. I don't know his last name. What's his first name? Keller. I'm sorry? K-E-L-L-R. Okay. You don't remember his first name? No, that's his first name. Oh, okay. I don't remember his last name. He's an old high school friend. He's blonde, tall, large in the middle. Um, yeah, he's able to, those Red Samaritans, right, helped me call my parents to let them know my car is in the river. Okay. And um, this is at 2 a.m. And what did you tell your parents? I mean, you obviously, you know, got to tell them something, the car's in the river. Yep. Yeah. So what I say is, I feel like I need to get out. I often do. I feel like I need to get out. 
Yeah, you... So you could have just walked over here. I could have. It's no use trying to deceive Paul. So that's oh. north to the east, so it's more on the west side of Crosby. It is the west tag. And you threw... What all did you throw while you were there? I mean, how many pieces so, am I looking for? There are two pieces of arm. This section has this section. Okay. In this general area. I can't I couldn't say where they are. Under Broadway at Crosby. By the road track. Yeah, by the uh, I don't know if these will help guys. Oh, oh yeah. No, no, thank you. Yeah, we already got it. We already got it. Thank okay. You. And um and then the body you know where Blue Heron is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was done there. Okay. Down the little ramp thing. Yeah, the little So I'm gonna so you touched about his arms and you touched about his head, I guess you kept the head? Uh, yeah, it was in my room, the okay. closet. The body's a blue hair, and what about, you said he took his clothes off of it? They're still there, along right. with his, in the crime scene. Did you crawl them, or there's no, no, they're still there, it's just the pile of his sleeping things. Okay. His, his, his clothes. They're on the back side of, uh, there where all the blood is. Hey, I just say on the back side of the temple. I just want to make sure I have that. So the arm and his clothes are near Crosby. Yeah, like this. Okay. Like here's here's Crosby Avenue, uh-huh. and here's the bridge. Here's the crime scene. Here's the railroad. The arms are around this area. Okay. Do you think and behind he, the pillar? Do you think he threw them past the railroad? No. Or are they between <laughs> these two. No, they're between those. Okay. And then. You said you took, was it the head in the hands? Mm-hmm. Um, and um, what did you put that in? Well, there's a th- there's a three rule for bodies. I like to call it the three rule. Okay, tell me about that. Three days the body starts to stink. No, three hours, rigor mortis sets in, the body stiffens. Three days the body starts to stink because of deep composition. Mm-hmm. Three weeks, the body is starting to seriously decompose. Right, right. Three months, the body is unrecognizable. Three years, it turns into a skeleton. And may I ask how you know that? I just, I've always had a fascination with forensics and with anatomy and physiology. That's something I made up. That's something I, I don't want to sound like I'm defending something, but that's why that's I coined the three rule. You kind of remember it that way. Yeah. That's your way of remembering it. Is it accurate? Well, somewhat, somewhat. So, so, yeah, so what did you, you have the head and the hand and your house. The head, I put, because it was starting to stink, I was planning on throwing the head and hands away. Okay. On the trash bag, and not in the kitchen trash, but they were both in trash bags. The head was in trash bag, and I tied up the trash bag. Hands, I put in a trash bag as well. They were in Ziploc bags. And I was go. I was planning. Do they sell empty paint buckets? Mm-hmm. I was planning to buy an empty paint bucket, put the head in it, seal it, and then I was going to throw it off in some ditch, like um, three o three forty Broadway, mm-hmm. that area, okay. where it'll be hard to reach. And okay. The hands I would throw in a different spot, wherever. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I have it right. The head is inside of a trash bag. It was. Well, where is it now? In the kitchen sink. My parents searched through my room and they found the head and hands. Okay. And so are the head and the hands in the kitchen sink now? Last time I checked. Okay. So they're in the kitchen sink now because your parents put them there. But they were in my closet. Were in your closet. And and what, kind of, what kind of trash bag? What exact kind of trash bag? White. White? Like a kitchen one or what? Like a kitchen one. Okay. White kitchen. That you put in a trash can. Yeah. And then what about the hands? They were inside Ziplocs, you said. Both in it's in the same. They're both in a different trash bag. Okay, the white kitchen trash bag. Yes. But now they're in the kitchen sink. Yes. Okay. Um, Still in trash bags. Okay. In the kitchen sink. Okay. Um, so that's the arms and the clothes, the head and the hands, and then the whole rest of the body you put in the river. God knows where it is now. Right, but it was put in there. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, P. I, do you, you can keep going. I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify those things. I was just trying to cut this out real quick. Um, um, you know, Brian, I have to ask. A lot of people that we have talked with, um, 
you know, I went. Well, or they're just not as well spoken as you are, to be honest with you. You're very articulate. You're very articulate. I think I'm bad with words. No, I actually think you're really articulate. And you, you talked about you were just kind of in a bad space that night. It was, yes. Okay. Why were you in a bad space? I didn't take my medicine. Um, and plus, for years, I was wondering what murder would feel like because you read shit like Ted Bundy and the Zodiac. They all say murder is the best feeling in the world. So I'm like, I'm going to try that. Okay. So for some time, I had been wondering when it would happen. I always knew I would be in this building, whether it was as a criminal or a police officer. Okay. Because I was planning to go in the military, go into forensics. Okay. All right. And, uh, How long do you really, you know, honestly think you've been thinking about really at some point you wanted to know what murder felt like? A year. And when did you start thinking about killing people? Six months ago. So, how old are you? I turned 19 last month. So, when thinking January, back. January, two months ago. Okay. Thinking back. It sounds like you killed a cat. No. Well, actually, I was thinking of killing people during the cat, but I wasn't checking on it. Um, but I started seriously thinking about killing people a year ago. How about when you were 12? Did you think about killing no. people? No. So what in your life has changed or what in your mind has changed? To make I you don't know. Was it like something all of a sudden one day you woke up and thought, I'll kill someone, or was it a gradual? It was gradual, I think. So tell me about when those thoughts were sort of happening. Well, in high school, last year, my parents found a kit I had been assembling. It had hammers, shovels, knives, um, or zip ties, duct tape, uh, saw. That was meant for hurting people. Um, they found it, though, and I convinced them it was via other methods, for other methods, for other things. like. Um, and it was an ultimatum where if I didn't throw it away, all that, um, then they would call the police, and then I would have been arrested on charges of conspiracy. And um, so, yeah, and, uh, that was last year before Halloween. So, what made you put that kit together? That was for nights like that. Okay. So back then you were thinking about doing that? Too. Yes. That was $100 stone away. <laughs> How much was the knife you used this time? 20 That was the same one. The last one I got was very sharp and impressed to me, so I bought the same one. Okay. Where'd you buy it? Safe way to my work. Oh. When? Like recently or a long time? Um, month, month ago. In January 2022, Brian Cohey pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, and court proceedings were halted 
so that he could undergo a state evaluation. Eventually, he was deemed competent to stand trial, and on February 3, 2023, after about two days of deliberation, a jury found Brian of silence for the guilty victim of first in this murder. case. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Condolences to all friends and people who have been affected by a killer. May our loved ones' souls continue to rest in peace. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a story.